Good morning everybody. This is Lisa in Connecticut. The video I'm doing right now is an update on my bin of Lumbricus rubellus, which is the um, which are an earthworm that are very good at composting worms. They're not considered a composting worm, they're considered an earthworm, but yet they have amazing composting behavior. So I don't know the honest answer or an accurate answer as to what classifies one worm as a compost worm versus an earthworm. I know for certain these are considered an earthworm, yet they do live very shallow. They do live on the surface and they eat on the surface. So that confuses me and would need more research by me to give you an answer. Anyway, this bin I didn't do an update on after I came back from um, being absent for a couple of months. and. This is the top. I haven't been in here today. I went in it um, 11 days ago just to quickly check. And at that time, what I found were a bunch of thriving worms. They didn't suffer at all from um, my absence. But I also found a bunch of wild invasive worms, the jumping worms. And the reason for that is that when I originally collected the rubellus back in late winter, early spring and brought them in, I gathered a bunch of the cocoons that were in the bedding and material I found the worms in. Now that area outside is heavily populated with invasive worms. I keep killing them, but they are there. So obviously many of the cocoons I brought in were that of the invasive worms, and they hatched in here. So we'll probably find a few. I have a container here that I'm going to toss them in. but. What, the reason I want to do this video, well, it's twofold. For one, I want to see, do the rubellus make cocoons and produce offspring in the wild as well as they do outside? I know they compost really, really well, but if they're not good breeders, then they really aren't ideal to be kept as a compost worm. And secondly, oh, we got some sort of little critter over here. Secondly... I, I want to check once again. Oh, that's just a baby airwig. I want to check once again. Um, hold on, now I lost the airwig. I want to check again for, for any more um, invasive worms. So let's just take a quick, a quick look in here. I'm going to be holding the camera. I I cannot see well through the camera, so I'm going to be holding the camera, but I'm not going to be looking through it. I'm going to be looking. In the bin with my with my naked eye. Now I'm seeing a few different kinds of critters here. Now this it looks like an airwig, but this is not a typical airwig. It has the little pinchers on the end, but the rest of it is uncharacteristic. So I don't know what this is. We'll put them aside. No matter what it is, right? It's some sort of. Okay, I got rid of our little guest. Now I am seeing little worms here. Oh. I don't know if you can hear that behind me. There's a pair of nest... That was my dog. What I was going to say is there's a pair of nesting eagles in one of the trees right behind me, and they've been very noisy. Eagles actually make a pretty wimpy noise for their for their size. It's, it's not impressive at all. You would think an eagle makes pretty loud noise, but no. No, they do not. Okay, so let's dig in here. So, um, one thing you'll notice is these castings are moist. I didn't uh, have to rescue these as I did the other bins. They stayed moist. Seven weeks, almost eight, they stayed moist. And I'm confident the reason behind that is that much of what was in their bin for bedding were natural collected things. There were leaves, there was grass clippings, there was some um, decomposing grass like there is a cocoon so that was one thing I was wanting to check is do they are they breeding and it looks like yes they are yes they are breeding um grass you know leaf mold there were sticks there was all kinds of things in here now there's not a ton of worms in here okay here's another one of these little critters it's definitely not a silverfish I don't know. I'm familiar with most of the insects. It's wanting to burrow, whatever it is. And it doesn't matter what it is. We'll take it out. 
Um, this is not a very heavily populated bin, but it's populated enough where they clear, they turn this entire thing into castings um, during that time period because I had just reset this bin. And you see how very dark they are. I always remember, originally I was referring to these as my black worms. I didn't know what they were and I was just calling them black worms because they look black to me in, in color. What I was saying is I didn't add any water to this yet. Um, I've been letting them go. Now here's another here's another cocoon. So they are they are cocooning. They're cocooning, which means they're breeding. Now these here, not very impressive in size. They certainly get a whole lot bigger than that. That could be because of the um, neglect. Well, I wouldn't call it neglect because it wasn't intentional. I guess it resulted in neglect, but it was certainly unintentional. Okay, I stirred up a bunch here. Now you can see how they're how they're looking, and they look really good. Now, I don't like the look of these castings, and it looks very gritty and grainy to me. And that's because when I collected the materials, I put some sand in here because that's what worms use outside as grit. They don't have eggshells or powdered oyster shells or, you know, what we feed them indoors as grit. So I tried to stay all natural, but I did add the cardboard and shredded newspaper and things from inside to see if they were going to work that and clearly very clearly they did okay so now we're getting into now we're getting into a higher population you can see why I call them the black worms because they really do look almost black they really do and actually now that I'm getting into these guys they're looking really good I'm not seeing Invasive worms anymore. Maybe I got them all. Invasive worms, they are surface dwellers for the most part. So if they were, if there were more in here, they would be right up the top as soon as I started digging. Now this is, this is really dry. And it could be one reason that I'm not seeing now, I was going to say more activity, but I don't really know what activity I would expect to see. The worms are down deep where it's moist, which I expect. They look healthy, which I'm glad. I am seeing young. I did find at least a few cocoons. It's not exploding with cocoons. That could be because they got dry. It could be because they don't breed that well in captivity. It could be the type of material I use, but I'm seeing a bunch of babies. So if there's a bunch of babies, that means there was a bunch of cocoons. Here's a, here's another new one. Here's another new one. Here's another cocoon. To keep looking. I'm, I'm holding it close because again, I'm looking just for cocoons and overall signs of any critters. One thing you will notice or will not notice, there are no mites. There's no, there's no anything else except those two things that look like airwigs that aren't, not airwigs and they're also not um, silverfish, but I'm not concerned whatever they were, probably something that was in the bedding or something that was in maybe even in it, maybe one of the cocoons I picked up was that of an insect. It's quite possible because I grabbed a little bit of everything. So the bin looks really, really good. The castings absolutely reflect the material that I put in. And the graininess is from the sand. I, I, there was several handfuls of sand in here, but as I turn over, 
as I turn over these worms, they're active, they're healthy, they look, they look in good condition. And uh, checking my dog, my dog's going crazy. So my big dog Gizmo, four nights ago, got sprayed head on by a skunk. And then two nights ago, both of my dogs got sprayed by a skunk. And yesterday, um, well, before the night, I put out my have a heart trap. Here's another critter. And I caught the skunk and I brought it down to the river and released it. And I took a video of that. It's actually a pretty funny skunk because my dogs didn't go near it. They've learned that lesson too many times. This little punk skunk, as I'm calling him, he's a little punk, was charging out from under my deck anytime anything walked off the deck stairs. I've never seen a skunk so bold. And it's young, you'll see. I took a video for my grandson to see. I'll upload it for for YouTube because it's just it's the funniest skunk. He was stomping his feet at me and charging at me, even in a little cage. But he got released in, along the river where there's lots of other skunks where my dogs are not going to get sprayed again. But they're rolling around in the grass and I hope they're not rolling in something stinky because you know how dogs are. If it smells, the worse it smells, the more they want to lay in it. So this is my, oh, no, that is a worm. I was going to say that looked like a little rock. I'm going really close over. So there, there was a cocoon that's hatched. You can see it's concave. You can see the dent in it. That means it's hatched. So, you know, I guess, well, to the color of these castings being so sandy and gritty is making it difficult for me, especially with my eyesight, to see a lot. Um, especially cocoons, because this is more brown than black. So I guess what, it, what you know, I am seeing a lot of babies. Here, here. I mean, I'm sure you've seen plenty as I've tossed the contents around. Because I know the camera's picking up far more than I can see. And your eyes can see far more than mine can see. Yeah, there's a lot of young in here, so there's probably a lot of cocoons. Material's dry. I think what I need to do is... Um, Try and bait these worms. Now that's going to be, that's going to be the interesting part is how do you bait them? Because they don't seem very food motivated. Unlike euros or red wigglers that if you add something, they just, you know, immediately go to it. These guys are not that way. Now I just found this. And this is a big guy. This is something... Let me look at the tail. This is an African nightcrawler. This is one of my Africans. Now, I know for a fact that when the neglect happened, somehow the Africans, not those in my urban worm bag, but the ones that were in the overflow bin that I still have going from when my urban worm bag originally collapsed, I still have this giant, giant container of worms. I'm slowly separating my species. Um, that bin was close to a lot of others, and many of the African nightcrawlers bin hopped into more favorable bins. Probably as their bin dried out, they hopped into others. So fortunately, they're very identifiable, and the size difference makes it a dead giveaway. All right, well, there's nothing exciting to see here, and I guess that's good, right? What we did see is cocoons. We saw babies. We can see that the worms are healthy. The castings are a bit dry. So, you know, that probably certainly accounts for much of their lack of enthusiasm here. Um, you know, the material is completely finished, other than a couple of sticks. You know, I have things like, you know, bark and things that were part of the original bedding. There's some rocks, wood chips, whatnot. But they did it. They finished this entire thing. I'll probably put these castings on one of my ornamental plants because I'm not thrilled with the quality. Oh, 
Okay, if y'all saw that, this here, this is a baby, this is a ladybug nymph. If you see this and it looks scary, it's not. This is a ladybug nymph in its earliest stage. Of course, that's trying to bury it, burrow. But this is a baby ladybug. And even though they put their butt up and look threatening like a scorpion, they can do nothing with it. So, those are good. Those are good. Okay, so my, I guess what I'm going to do, and I will film it. I'm going to put some, well, I'll film the outcome. I'm going to bait this bin at one end, and I'm going to water it. Because I want to see, I guess the final test of a rubella is worth keeping is how difficult... Sorry, this one was just flipping out like doing some crazy dance over there. Sorry, I missed it. It was highly entertaining. Um, how easy or how difficult are they to bait? Because I have a feeling they are very content in this material, especially since there's still some pieces of stick and wood and bark that for these guys, because of their natural habitat, they would love. So I'm going to put some fruit or something that I think would be appealing and see if they go toward it. And if they don't, if after a few days I haven't noticed any migrate, migratory behavior, then I'm going to make the decision to turn them, turn them loose. You know, this was an experiment. I didn't plan on raising them large scale, but I wanted to see how they would do. There's still a lot of pieces of wood and bark and things in here but that's it everything else is gone i mean they really they did a beautiful job i'm really impressed i mean sticks sticks this size you know it's not that's not going to be easy to break down certainly not in seven weeks so okay so i'm going to bait this bin i'm going to water it some more i just saw another cocoon here right here going to water it. Let me make sure it's a cocoon and not my bad eyeballs. No, there's two actually. Okay. I'm going to water it and I'm going to bait it. And then I'm going to give it hmm, let's say five days. So it's Friday. Maybe around Wednesday I'll do an update. But we'll check to see if they've migrated at least somewhat towards the food. They're slow. These remind me of the sloths of the worm world, right? <laughs> really slow. Very calculated. I don't think they do anything more than they have to. Kind of me as a teenager, I guess, right? Probably many of us as a teenager. No, just kidding. Actually, I was a crazy teenager, so I wasn't slow. But, so that's the rubella spin. I'm going to bait it, and in five days, plus or minus a day, because sometimes things come up, and sometimes I am not functioning well still in healing stage um so if it's not wednesday it'll be thursday or it may be tuesday but we're going to see the results of baiting this bin and then that will be the determining factor on whether or not i keep this going harvest it and start it again or just let them loose back into their natural habitat so until then everybody thank you for watching thank you for subscribing Please leave a thumbs up. I know I always say that, but I get so few thumbs up, and I don't know why. I leave a thumbs up for every, every video I watch to show my appreciation of to the creator that took the time to film and edit it. And it's so, so simple to do. So, if you would, please, a thumbs up. Share my channel if you know anyone that would enjoy the content. And as always, please leave any feedback or suggestions below and, you know, any, um, any questions you have, any comments, any anything, it's all good and have an amazing day.